Photoshop is a very powerful image editing program. One of the reasons it remains the industry standard for editing after 25 years is the fact you can work in layers. While in journalism we use only a handful of available tools in conjunction with our examination of the toolbar, it would be handy to introduce the concept of windows and palettes where you'd access layers. By going up to the Apple menu and going to Window, you can drag down to find a number of options. Right now, let's drag down to Layers, Release, and a window appears, also referred to as a palette, labeled Layers, right here. Like the toolbar, experienced users of Photoshop often find it handy to have a number of palettes open while they work as they add quick access to functionality of different tools. The Layers palette that we open would certainly qualify in this case. Additionally, let's open the History window or palette by dragging down to history and let's go ahead and open the swatches palette again by dragging down the window to swatches and there's our swatch palette now we have three palettes opened in our workspace the layers palette is especially handy to have on a desktop as we look at our next tool which is the type tool The type tool is represented by the T icon in the toolbar and it allows you to add type to an image. Clicking on the T and then clicking on the image, you'll see we've got a small rectangle and a flashing cursor showing you where the type is being placed in the image. In the options menu at the top of your work area, you'll see you can select the font, the font family, the point size of the type, and various other options including the color. Let's go ahead and here and select Helvetica Noi and from the type family we we'll select condensed black for the point size we're going to go a little larger than we have currently just so we can see it on the image so we'll select 60 point you can see our cursor got bigger on the image to indicate the larger point size that we've selected up in the options menu now as i begin to type you can see that the type is displayed across my image And it's still active here. We can see that by the cursor flashing. If we click back over on the Move tool at the top of the toolbar, we can then see that there is no longer the small rectangle and the flashing cursor, meaning that the type is no longer active. We can also see over here in our Layers palette that our typing has created a layer, indicated by the T icon that it's a type layer, and it replicates our type that we've put in here, saying this is the type tool. With the Move tool on and it being on a separate layer, we can move the type around the image and do um, place it anywhere we want. Similarly, if we want to reactivate the type and type some more by clicking on our Type tool and double-clicking on our type, we can change the color. So we can take and make it yellow if we wanted to, which we've done there. Or again, by clicking on the Type tool and double-clicking, we can add more to our type. Now, one of the beauties of it being on layers, and layers in general, is that we can use the layers, as we saw, to either move the type around the image without affecting the background image, or by clicking on the eye icon, we deactivate the layer altogether. Clicking the eye icon back on, the layer is active. We can always tell which layer is active because it's highlighted here. Similarly, if we no longer want the type, we can basically just throw it out the layer and start over. The final layer feature we wanted to introduce here is the adjustment layers. By going up to Layers in the Apple menu and dragging down to New Adjustment Layer, let's go over to Levels and it opens up couple of dialog boxes here. The first one is says new layer. We OK that and we can see over here in our layers box it's opened up an adjustment layer. It also is a dialog box here that we can adjust the tonality on the photograph. It's the levels box. First off you might want to try hitting auto and see if it does anything. Then by dragging the sliders, this is your white slider you have a black slider and a mid-tone slider. By dragging the sliders, you can adjust the tonality to a very large degree. 
Here I can darken it with the midtone slider. So you can actually lighten and darken your photo to your satisfaction. And then when you're done with it, you can close the box. And as you can see here in our layers, we've got a layer called levels, which contains our adjustment. Again, by clicking off the eye on it, it takes us back to our original image. So it makes it a very handy way to adjust the photograph and not have to keep the adjustments if we don't want them. In this video, we've highlighted windows, palettes, layers, and how they work with the type tool and adjustment layer.